We're going to a deep, deep sleep. Your eyes are getting heavy. We're going back to September 19, 1961. I'm Betty Hill. And my husband, Barney, and I were the first to be abducted by astronauts from another solar system. What makes the Betty and Barney case so extraordinary is they're the first Americans to claim to be abducted. It's the first time that hypnosis was used to regress people to recover those memories. Betty wanted to understand this and to unlock the secrets, if you will, of everything that happened. I don't know where we are. I don't even know how we got here. I, I was afraid when I saw the men on the road. Men in the road. <laughs> I never been so afraid in my life. It seems pretty clear what the aliens were doing. It's a medical exam. The examiner has a long needle. And he's put it in my table. Do they keep coming back? Have they gotten what they want? Or is there a further motive? I believed we had seen and been a part of something different than anything seen before. Welcome to the Grim and Bloody podcast, brought to you by Desperade Film uh, Fest of Northern California. My name is Kevin Nicholson, author uh, and uh, writer and uh, interviewer and uh, man about town for uh, HorrorNews.net and Scary Monsters Magazine. With me, as always, is Anthony Duround, the man pushing the buttons, founder of Desperate Film Fest, and uh, uh, filmmaker himself, uh, himself, by Anthony, uh, Joe Flynn, Creative TV horror, uh, horror show host, the award winning Create TV host. Thank you. All right. And Al Omega, the creature features horror guru himself. Thank you. And, Thank you. uh, with us today is a very special, uh, guest, a, uh, Peabody award-winning, Emmy award-winning, uh, so many awards. I think I've, uh, you know, I've uh, the list is longer than my arm. Uh, Mr. Tom Jennings, journalist and documentary filmmaker. Tom, how are you doing today? I am Hi. great. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I've been listening to some of your episodes and they're a lot of fun and very informative. So I'm grateful to be here. Well, Thanks. we're happy to have you because you actually, you, you do two things where you fit into, um, we can talk about some of your other uh, projects that you have. Uh, documentaries on uh, exorcism. There's one on uh, Amityville that's coming up. So you definitely seem a fan of the horror genre, but you're also, and one of the reasons why you're here to, uh, here tonight is you are also a uh, uh, you're also doing some documentaries about some very real terrifying uh, you know incidents, alien abduction, and you're doing some wonderful things that are uh, specials that are going to show up next week on Discovery Plus. And uh, I thought we would get started with that for uh, for a little bit, and then we'll get into some of your uh, some of your other, uh, you know, work. And, you know, folks, do check out this guy. Uh, uh, Tom Jennings has a history of other uh, work as we were talking off camera about John Wilkes Booth and uh, a documentary that he did for, uh, years ago. So there's... You could punch in a different subject on uh, online and probably find Tom Jennings' name uh, attached to a documentary about it. I like but, that you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> but let's start. The first thing, what what fascinates me about alien abduction, one of the most fascinating, uh, you know, uh, uh, evolve, you know, themes, not only that. Aliens have visited Earth, uh, 
They have, but they have sure. actually taken people from Earth and experimented, uh, you know, on them. And there is, you know, there's there's the one side that really believes in it. There's the other side that uh, that is is out there to intensely debunk, uh, debunk it. Um, you know, who 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 want to say that these people are. Uh, a bit unbalanced people or have some issues uh you know uh in their in their lives mentally or um or otherwise i tend to be the one that that believes that some you know something has happened if you can show me a piece of evidence that really can't be explained in any other way and what i lead up to is the uh one of the one of the documentaries that you're doing um for uh that we'll be showing on discovery plus is the barney and betty hill uh story and this is fantastic because this is a story about um a couple an interracial couple average new hampshire uh you know folks barney was a uh, uh was a postal worker um and uh betty was a was a welfare worker uh, you know uh, a social worker and september 19th 1961 they go out on a uh, uh, on a drive well let me let, let, i'll let you take it over from uh, uh, sure. uh from there is it this one of the things that's fascinating is that their their situation involves two hours where they suffer a sim an almost simultaneous or, or, or you know they they both suffer the same amnesia. That's correct. And then they wind and, up thirty six miles from when they remember. Right. And they but not only and, and they wake up very, very well. <laughs> and, yeah, and, they, and they wake up from a, a wake up from this two hour uh time you know frame by hearing beeping uh you know sounds um take it from there what fascinated you about this story um many things uh like you i'm, I'm you know i'm not a true believer but you know i have a very open mind just to preface all of this I remember, you know, like uh, middle school, you're learning about space and kind of laying in my bed at night trying to imagine the vastness of space and how big it was, it is. And it just goes on and on and on. And I remember like, having anxiety attacks about where does it end? You know, it doesn't end. I've always been fascinated by what's out there. and. I, I also believe that as uh, several of the people in these two documentaries that we have coming out um, talk about, you know, it's a little, um, uh, uh, we have a bit of hubris in believing that we are the only beings in this vastness of space. And um, as long as we keep an open mind, you never know what's going to happen. These two that we're doing, like, uh, and especially Betty and Barney Hill, they were the first one. They're like the first great alien abduction story in the United States about the world. It just hadn't been discussed before. Right. And like you said, they were uh, kind of an ordinary couple living mm -hmm. in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They were actually in Niagara Falls for their honeymoon, which had been belated. And they heard that a hurricane was coming up the coast. They were going to stay over. And so they decided, you know, let's just get home. Let's haul. And so they started driving and they got to this place, uh, this area in New Hampshire called Indian Head. And that's where the story really starts to take off. And one of the things that we do that I feel is very important with this, this is part of the Shock Doc series from Travel mm -hmm. Channel. And we've done six, seven of them now. And, um, you know, our background, we, we do a lot of like uh, archive based shows. Uh, the Peabody show was about uh, the assassination of Martin Luther King in Memphis, where we found a bunch of local news footage 
that no one had ever seen before. So we take that kind of template, that journalistic approach, where, believe it or not, this went down and it was huge news. And not only that, we were able to find archival material like the regression hypnosis sessions that Barney and Betty went through. So in our program, once we set that all up, you have them narrating the thing. We found uh, my hometown is uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I don't live there anymore, but there was a radio disc jockey there named Alan Douglas, and he was based in Cleveland, but it was a nationally uh, syndicated show. And in 1966, he interviewed Betty and Barney over the phone, and they further explained the story and that's one of these interviews that's been lost to time. So we're really good at finding sounds and images and footage that make you feel like even if you know the story, you're experiencing it for the first time. And so that's what we apply to these. Mm -hmm. And then we leave it up to the audience. Hey, you can believe this or not, but this is what happened. This is the best telling of that story at that time that we can do. And uh, it works. Uh, Discovery loves it. You know, it's like, wow, it's a journalistic approach to alien abductions. What a cool idea. So um, hopefully we'll make some more of them. Well, see, that's what that's what kind of uh, uh, intrigued me as well is how do you sell a network on a story that has been so well told? Yeah. Uh, Many gonna, years. Good question. How do you I'll sell it? Yeah. Well, you that's know. just it. Has it been well told before? Yep. I haven't seen your show yet, uh, but it sounds like it hasn't been compared to what you've done. And that's yeah. always the great thing. Yeah. We, uh, when we do these archive based shows, whether it's alien abductions or, uh, you know, we did uh, Princess Diana for Netflix. And, sure. Uh, we did uh, the Apollo the program. I mean, we do whatever they're buying, basically. But when we do them, we throw a really wide net. You know, we just we don't just go to Getty Images and call it a day. You know, we, <laughs> which a lot of producers will do. Uh, no, net, don't name names. Don't <laughs> those guys will kill us. I hate them. <laughs> Okay. So we, we go to, we've like find people that are private collectors and, you know, uh, one, a, a bit of our, you guys might, you know, as filmmakers, you might appreciate this, uh, uh, an archival, um, um, uh, uh, archival material that's always overlooked because, you know, producers are looking for images to tell the story. Um, there's always a lot of images. There's always a lot of stills. We found some Life magazine photographs of Benny and Barty, of which maybe six were published. Well, we got the compact sheet of like 30. But the thing that's always overlooked is radio. And radio is the theater of the mind. So they, radio guys and women, they, they use very colorful and expressive language to tell a story about what's going on because it's just their voice. So if you take radio and then you marry it with stills or footage that don't necessarily have commentary with it, the whole story just uh, elevates like a spaceship. You know, it just uh, takes off. And oh yeah, <laughs> it really it's works. Our, yeah, it's like if you look back at when. H.G. Wells did War of the World yeah. on the radio. And, you know, you add that into some kind of, you know, material. Yeah. 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 There you it's go. It's really cool. So we, we uh, how do we sell it? Well, they said, hey, can you come up with, a, you know, we're going to go away from The Exorcist and Amityville, which we, and we did Ed and Lorraine Warren, you know, the, uh, paranormal investigator those were all yeah. great so then they said you know we want to look at this space and we did our research and we realized that this story and the story of travis walton uh a decade well 15 years later out of arizona were by yeah. far the most famous and uh that helps because they want the his well uh, a network once told me 
that if you're going to pitch me a shipwreck, it better be the Titanic. <laughs> you know, they want name recognition uh -huh. that will hook the audience right away. And so we found these two, and then we started to do some of the initial research that we do. And it turned out that we found the hypnosis sessions. We found that radio broadcast out of Cleveland. Uh, we found interviews with Betty and Barney that were filmed. It just went on, you know, we started gathering and then we presented it and they were like, uh, yeah, let's do this one. That sounds cool. So we have to prove it that we can deliver at a very high level of quality. And in this case, but in both these films, uh, I believe we did. And I hope you guys enjoy them. They're, they're, I, mean, I just watched them again today, six months ago. And um I'm like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up, um, yeah, how do you sell a documentary that has been um, done so many times over? And as you're talking, it reminded me of Ken Burns. Yeah. yeah I've watched so many Vietnam documentaries, and then I saw the one that he did. Yeah. It was completely different. It was, it was like I was watching the full untold story where you know it was like it for us horror guys it's like the arrow video or shout factory version of a film right you're getting the story plus everything else around mm -hmm. it that just tells you both sides and um, i'm excited because it's seeing your past work um i, I and hearing about all the extra details um that's going to be included i'm excited because i want to know I, I, i'm one of the skeptics i'm like it, on the fence i'm like is it real is it not real um, it was a biracial couple during a time where there was a lot of civil unrest when it was uh, unpopular to be a biracial couple, even though um, Barney, when he was educated, you know, he had a marriage, um, they, they both worked, they seemed very stable, didn't seem like the type of couple that uh, were, were looking for, you know, some media exposure, you know, um, and even reading and watching uh, about their, their, uh, their experiences, it doesn't sound like, you know, your typical alien that, that we're used to, you know, it sounded like a, an examination done by a higher authority, right? There was a lot of empathy show towards them. Um, when we hear about alien induction guys, what is it? Oh, they had me on a torture slab, right? It was, it was crazy, right? All these fantastical, there was nothing fantastical about their, their story, you know, um, the way the alien ship was, it sounded practical. You had people in a display port, they were looking. Um, you know, the, the beeping sound that could have been uh, a mental trigger I'm thinking when I hear about it, it's like, well, I only started remembering when I hear the beeping sound. Um, so it, everything sounds, this doesn't sound fantastical. It doesn't sound like um, it was going to be a, a pitch for a Hollywood movie. It sounds like maybe this actually did happen and no one wants to believe it because then, you know, that's going to terrify everybody that we're, we're no longer you know, the top of the food chain out there. Well, you bring up an interesting point. We, we, we did uh, recently for, well, Disney Plus and Nat Geo, we did uh, what was called the real right stuff that was uh, married with uh, the Disney Plus uh, remake of the right stuff. They did an eight episode fictional version. And oftentimes we get tapped, uh, you know, it's like, hey, we're doing this fictional thing on the right stuff. Can you do one of those archive things for us? You know, and the way we do a lot of them is there's no narrator and there's no modern day interviews. The whole point is to serve as a time machine so that I always joke that, you know, people, the audience is waiting for the narrator to come along and save them and the narrator never shows up. So it becomes as engaging as you can make television uh, you know, which is a very passive way of, of receiving a story. Um, but uh, when we do these things, uh, what I wanted to say was that, oh, I forget now, but one thing about Betty and Barney to keep in mind was not only were they kind of like this ordinary couple, granted an interracial couple at a time where that was out of the ordinary, but they lived fairly middle-class lives, they had no reason to make this up. And more importantly, after they had done some of this uh, 
Hypno they reported it to Pease Air Force Base, which was the Air Force Base there outside of Portsmouth. And they felt like they had taken it as far as they could go. And they just wanted to put it in the rear view mirror. They did, it was not publicly known. You know, no one knew about it except, you know, their close family and a few friends. And four years after it happened, one of Betty's friends who knew the story sold them out to a newspaper in Boston, which ran a five part series. And the whole thing blew up. And Betty and Barney were contacted by the reporter before the series came out asking for comment and they refused and they said, we don't want this to be a big deal. Well, as soon as it hit, it became a big deal. Yeah. And so they then shifted their tack and what they decided to do is, we're not gonna let someone else, an unknown friend tell our story. So they decided to tell their story. One of my favorite things, I don't know if you remember long ago but uh there was a tv series called to tell the truth yes you know, sure. right yes, yeah, well, yes, you, sure. the real tom jennings please stand up you know it had a celebrity <laughs> panel and um we found a clip of the uh a show where barney was on the show wow. <laughs> oh wow like, wow you know that's the kind of stuff we find to put you in the time so right. that you really feel like, hey, you know, I'm, I know I'm watching this from afar, but I'm being pulled deeper and deeper into it because I'm seeing all this cool stuff that I've never seen before. So, it, and at, it also seems Barney didn't want publicity. They, they were like, we don't want it. But once their lives were trashed in a sense, they said, fine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, what I thought was, was interesting when I listened to those audio recordings, uh, the interviews and so forth. They didn't want to believe this. No. They didn't want to believe at all that this had anything to do with, uh, you know, with, with, with the aliens and so forth. They had every excuse uh, they, they could think of to try to, you know, say that it was not aliens or uh, anything. They didn't know what they were visiting. They didn't want to believe, uh, you know, any of this. And yet it was simply... They couldn't help, you know, but believe that something was going on. This is, this is a, like you said, this is an ordinary couple. This is a couple, you know, perhaps still in, in the McCarthyism, you know, era of Eisenhower, uh, you know, and, and so forth. These were just an ordinary, mild-mannered, uh, middle-class, you know, couple who have this, uh, have this happen. And when I... I'll tell you, you know, this much when I, I almost didn't believe their story until Betty drew the, the star map. <laughs> I was going to say until Kevin got abducted, but we'd go with that one too. Well, <laughs> never mind, Kevin. That's another story for another <laughs> time. Well, and then, you know, in uh, again, Ohio, thank you very much, me being from there. In 1975, a teacher in Ohio deciphered the map and she came up with this 3D rendition of Betty's drawing that was in their book that they had published uh, almost a decade earlier. And uh, they, you know, they figured out it was in this star system. I want to double check the name 39 light years from earth called uh, where is that but it's it's a map i want to say is... alpha centauri but that's not it yeah. data I, I, reticuli, I, 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 data reticuli. that's go. where the leader said they were from he didn't use the name he pointed to this spot on the map this 3d glow we did a nice job with the cg on that by the way nice <laughs> And uh, so this teacher in 75, who was a Mensa member, and she was a, uh, an amateur astrom astronomer. Astrom astrom yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? And anyway, she, she, she wound up doing it with like wire and beans and, you know, it was crazy, but she figured out where the leader pointed to. And uh, 
you know, that also was like, wow, you know, now you can physicalize what Betty said she saw in that spaceship. And, 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 and you really, my jaw dropped when you realize what Betty has drawn is not a look into a star map from the viewpoint of Earth. It's looking at it from space. Yes. at the uh the earth so what you know what an alien civilization would be seen and uh uh and then it was uh i, I think the because there was there's three uh three stars or three uh i don't know three planetary bodies that were unknown on the map that she drew right. but at the time but in 1969 they became, uh, you know, uh, they became known and were and were pretty much were, were discovered. If I if correct me on this, were discovered to be where she's, you know, pretty much where she had it on the map. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And then in '75, with yeah. the teacher from Ohio, yeah. Yeah. she did 14 different versions that didn't work. And what happened was the. Uh, it was NASA at the time, they came up with a new star map, the government, you know, like here's the latest distance chart. And it was slightly different than the one this teacher had been working off of. And when she plugged those new numbers into her system, everything fit. So yeah, I mean, everything fit in 75, but in 61, it wouldn't have fit at all. Oh, and I remembered what I wanted to tell you when we did a lot of these, like the right stuff and yeah. the Apollo film. I did some podcasts like this one and, you know, uh, talked about where we got the footage and things like that. And invariably they would ask me, you know, oh, when we, you know, but like the Apollo missions and then the Mercury, John Glenn, the world stopped, you know, and this was the age of Sputnik from 57 so everybody was flipped out about space and then you know you had apollo 11 landing and the world literally stopped and and so people would often ask me having studied all this footage and listened to stuff do you ever think the world will stop again and like with mars and i said i don't know that it would stop with mars i think it would slow down and they said, well, what would make it stop? And I said, proof of first contact. The world will stop then. Ah, oh, I would believe that. <laughs> because that will change everything. So Betty and Barney are, in a sense, the uh, pioneers of getting that type of story out. And uh, like you said, they had no reason to do this. Not only that, they didn't want it told. I mean, you know, they did everything in their power to not have it be public until it was just blown open. So why would they make it up? There was nothing in their backgrounds. Everything that you read about these guys, uh, this, this couple, is that they just want to be left alone. Left alone. Quiet, exactly. mild-mannered people. And But here's, you're talking about, here's this friend who decides friend in quote <laughs> yeah. hi i'm that friend uh, no uh, that was well, interesting. I, go ahead al i think i was gonna say in, in the movie they they touched on the specter of racism and in the 60s and the northeast like that i, I have you know in the movie he says he does he's never really had a problem but i have to believe that um that's not true yeah time. Yeah, so he was very I, involved in the civil rights movement, but uh, it was highly uncommon, even in a place where you would consider like, you know, outside of north of Boston, it was just, uh, I, I don't want to say frowned upon, but it didn't happen yeah. often. And uh, but they were fine with it. they were in love and they were like, hey, we're just going to live our lives. People don't realize that he carried a gun with him that night 
Yeah. He carried a gun with him in the trunk well, of his car. He probably carried it more often car. than just that. Well, right, but I mean, the uh, the gun was with him. He he actually, um, in in his in the tapes, he actually uh, you know talks about going to the yeah. trunk of his car to get the gun, right. and it kind of, as you said, Al, it kind of connects up with this whole racial racial unrest uh, you know thing because he talks a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, and but I uh, wanted to link, uh, yeah, go ahead. I wanted to link that uh, and, and bring in your know, Travis Walton. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. okay, fire yes. in the sky, fire and, in the sky. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I and remember you couldn't expect him to have a gun, but apparently they didn't, as I recall. But <laughs> I haven't watched that one in a long time. Uh, but here's a person who, as I recall, I, I, I have not done my reading on it. Also, wasn't that big on on telling people about it. He was very embarrassed. No, exactly. uh, because this was so was his family. Bad. That's true. They didn't yeah. want to make a big deal out of it. How do you have some sixteen light uh, polygraph tests yes. go positive and people still doubt the story? <laughs> well, you know, here uh, 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 in a historical. Uh, context, you know, the early 60s, I think Betty and Barney's story was a little more, and this might be, I might be stretching it, but I think it was a little more accepted. I mean, he was on tell the truth, to tell the truth, you know, it's like, and everybody applauded when he stood up. But by the mid 70s, we'd had the moon landing, uh, the, the space race was pretty much coming to an end with the Soviets. People, and this is my opinion, just looking back on it, by 75, when that happened, people were like, oh, yeah, outer space, aliens, kind of been there, done that. You know, it was dismissed, heckled, even in his hometown of Snowflake, Arizona, people would just laugh at him when he walked by. What's funny is we interviewed Travis now, and uh, they don't laugh at him anymore. You know, because of the last couple of years with military footage coming out, the pilots, woohoo, you know, following around. <laughs> and and they don't laugh at Travis anymore up there. No. There yeah, was a, I, uh, go down. Go. I was going to say, there's also that, uh, that TV show for a while, Project Blue Book. Yes. Do you think that helped a lot of people? Uh, while Project Blue Book, I don't recall them ever actually saying, yes, we have uh, proof here or something like that. Um, I think they always said, well, we can't really explain that that one little piece. But do you think that helped normalize it for a lot of uh, normal, I should say normal, average Americans that this could be something real? I do. I mean, when you start to uncover what what's there and what we haven't been told, you know, what the government has been doing all of these years to try and prove or disprove various sightings or abduction stories, yeah, I mean, it's almost like this tsunami of information that's starting to roll over us. And you, you know, you reach this point, this tipping point of critical mass where you think something's going on here. Uh, you know, there's just too much coming at me at the same time from too many different directions to just write this off as somebody's fantasy. There's something else happening. I may not be able to discern what that is, but something may be out there. Yeah, so I agree. Things like Project Blue Book um, help uh, tell us, you know, there's always been fictional, you know, the X-Files and things like that, which kind of, you know, is more like a horror show in a sense, you know, yes. it's very creepy. But that too kind of like, I think, knocked on people's noggins to say, Hey, uh, you know, David the Covney's pretty cool. Maybe he's on to something. <laughs> you <know>? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I thought the one with roaches was very realistic. I think that one actually piqued a lot of people's uh, interest in yes. aliens. I yes. knew that Gillian Anderson had to be smart. She was on that show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think um, look, he's easy to love. <laughs> looking back at Walton's story, I think yes. the, the big difference, at least from the beginning, is 
he had a number of coworkers involved. Yes. Where it, as seven and just, crew. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just Betty and Barney here. This had the potential to be much more better because now you have you know, a whole number of, of witnesses that can corroborate your story. Um, now, I'm not as familiar as the Walton case with Betty and Barney, um, but from reading it, it sounds like yeah, he, he'd struggled a lot with, there was a lot of skepticism around uh, his telling. A um, lot of uh, details were inconsistent. Um, at least with Betty and Barney, it, it, it felt so matter of fact. And looking back at some of the uh, the historical footage, they, they were just telling us, this is what happened. You know, you could take it or leave it. Um, this is how the saucer looked. This is what they did with us. Um, but I think it, nowadays, I think if, if these stories came out, um, as you mentioned with Hollywood, there's just so much now that it, I mean, literally while I'm watching, now I'm only 41. When I was watching uh, the Betty and, and Barney story, my, the back of my mind, I'm thinking this sounds still a lot like Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters, right? It, it's just, it's just a product of my generation because I grew up, on you know jaws i grew up on you know uh cocoon i grew up on alien right it's i we're inundated with so many stories so many you know versions of the same thing that if something like this did happen if you just had a normal everyday couple walking down the street that were picked up right and and they just told their one friend on next door let's say for example um how would we react right it, it would probably be the same way we would slam the door and we probably, they probably wouldn't even reach a polygraph, right? They probably wouldn't even reach a point where someone's taking them serious enough to, to, to sit, sit them down and, and try to extract the truth. It would, it would, the door would be shut so quickly. Either the door would be shut or they would say, that is an amazing story. Can you put that in a treatment here? And uh, I'm going to give you a check for $5,000 because I would like the rights to this. You know, it, it would be something like that. It, it's a shame because I'm kind of a believer too, even though I did watch X-Files. <laughs> I'm kind of a believer too because honestly it, it, we can't sit here and say we're the only intelligent species in the galaxy it, that would just be so ignorant of us to say we're all that's it out there I, uh, I agree you know one thing about both these stories that um, to uh, speak to what you were just saying you know close encounters or alien you know they're fictionalized perhaps you know taking some kernels of truth out of various stories but Spielberg or whomever is directing can basically make it up they can make it you know the alien pops out of the guy's chat they can do whatever they want when you're doing non-fiction approach to these stories it's almost like the mundane de details or the consistent de from one to the next to the next makes you start to connect uh, and uh, one of the biggest ones is uh, Barney and Betty described what these aliens, these creatures looked like when they first, Barney first saw them in the ship. And then when they were taken aboard, they described for the first time that we know of, unless the government is keeping something else secret, what are called the greys, the, 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 the aliens that are like four feet tall and kind of the odd shaped head and great big eyes. Well, fast forward to Travis Walton. I don't think that Travis knew much about Benny and, uh, uh, Betty and Barney. His description of the people, the, the beings that he encountered were also greys. And other stories along the way echoed that. So in a sense, it's in, and, and, you know, we start to think the speed at which, you know, that's a very good point, the speed at which they fly. And it's like, oh yeah, sure. It just goes, psh, you know, and then you see this military footage coming out in the last year or two with the pilots trying to fly, you know, it's fascinating. You think, wait, that's exactly how they did it in that movie. Or that's right. exactly what Travis Walton said. And now we get to see it. So what's going on? And you know what? We like to think that we're the center of the universe. We may be way out in left field and we don't even know it. I like to think it, it, it would be, if it was how we think it is, it would probably be something like contact. 
Jodie Foster. Yeah. I know I hate to bring another Hollywood film, but it no. had such a practical feel to it where the only way, to, uh, the yeah, best way they would communicate to us would be through sure. mathematics, the universal language, right? Um, they responded using the first radio signal broadcast that went into outer space. So there was some, some, some real. So there was it was grounded in science as much as a Hollywood film can yeah. be. Um, but me personally, I would like to think it would be something like that. Like we want to communicate you, but you guys are a primitive being, so we have to find some common ground. Well, and like, it looks like uh, math uh, is the only language you guys can grant. <laughs> Uh, I like close encounters with the music. The oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Well, do, 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 do. Story. You know, the alien says, you know, uh, you, she says, where am I? Where are we on this map? And he says, do you know where you are? How, if you don't know where you are, right. how can you know where I am? Right. Uh, and you can't get there from here, by the way. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, that's that. right. It did say that. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's all about the speed at which we can travel because the distances are so vast. And, you know, if you believe that they're coming from some other place, they have they have figured it out. Well, you know, whether it's a wormhole or whatever they're using to- It's warp move. drive. It's warp drive. Warp drive, Captain. That's <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> you brought it up, Kevin. I was gonna mention Star but, Trek. You know. Hey, I believe hey, any I'll show be that has William Shatner in it. Right. I was hiding my uniform, cry out loud. Uh, I think a hundred years from, have warp drive. Come on, a hundred years from now, uh, some alien world is going to discover Elon Musk's uh, Tesla flying past. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So before we wrap, guys, yes. uh, yeah. Tom, where can yes. people find you? Um. In Los Angeles, no, they can find <laughs> Cleveland, <laughs> Ohio. I go to Cleveland a lot. I have family there. Um, my company's name is uh, 1895 Films. We have a website. A lot of our kind of sizzle reels are on there. And as soon as these two are put up on uh, Discovery, that'll be on there. Uh, so www.1895films.com. By the way, people always say, oh, is that your address? And I say, no. <laughs> It is not. It's kind of inside baseball. We do a lot of history shows. 1895 is the year of the first motion picture camera. The Lumiere brothers in Paris with the train coming into the station. So that's what it's about, 1895 Films. We also have an Instagram account with the same and Twitter. Um, so we're out there. Um, you can find us easily. We have a, if you have an IMDB account, you can go on and see everything we've done. Like I said, we like to keep well, busy. Uh, you're only as good as your next project in this business. So we're always looking for good stories. We'll talk a little bit about, uh, okay. So next week, Discovery Plus will be broadcasting on February 18th, right? Yeah, Friday, uh, 11th, 18th, correct. Uh, next Friday, I guess, I don't know, you know, I don't even know how they, I guess it's like one minute after midnight, they just put it on. I, so it does uh, drop, as the kids say, um, <laughs> February 18th, and then it'll be on there in perpetuity. Um, For anybody that has uh, Discovery Plus streaming Discovery Plus service. streaming, and then it will move back to... Well, it'll stay there, but it'll also air probably within the next month on Travel Channel if people still have linear or cable. Um, and it's they're part of the Shock Docs series. It's kind of an ongoing series about you know taking this journalistic approach to um, you know captivating stories that are a bit outside the mainstream, like The Exorcist or Amityville, or certainly alien abductions with travis walton and betty and Barney. well we, we have to have you back because i, I you know you you are doing one on the exorcist uh well, we already on did the exorcism that, sure yeah the true story of the exorcist you guys are probably familiar sure. it, it wasn't about a girl it was a boy it started in dc but it really i never actually looked into I, that is fascinating 1949 right um correct if i remember. and yeah, then the, you also all, do one about amityville Amityville, and right? The George Lutz story. George Lutz, he was quite a piece of work. But, uh, you know, we took it apart. We found the journalists who covered it at the time. Yeah. We found their footage. 
again, you know, we we take sure. such a deep dive that people say, oh, I know all about Amity. But no, you know, watch this and you'll feel like you're seeing it for the first time. And wow. uh, even wow. people that have know uh, the, these two stories, Travis Walton, you know, Fire in the Sky and I, yeah. Betty and uh, Barney Hill, you know, to tell the truth. Um, the um, If you think you know it, you haven't seen the half of it based on what we found. And I can right. say that, you know, uh, and be really sure of myself. Right. Well, they're fun. You. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're fun to watch and, you know, you just never know what's up there. Oh, you know, I, well, thank yeah. you so much, um, Tom yeah, Penning, for Tom. joining us. You're, uh, you're very, welcome. This thank has you. been a very informative uh, show, a very informative. And I, I am I'm fascinated by this, uh, you know, by this whole alien abduction uh, you know, story, the whole idea of of uh, us not being alone in the universe. No, I, I, I just think it's it's too big. It's just too, it goes on forever. But see, I'm the optimist though. I, I don't see it as something that dis, that destroys mankind. I see it as something that causes us to go on the next journey of evolution. Uh, it can bring I, us together, I, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're coming here to wage war of the worlds on us. Mm -hmm. uh, both, both of these stories, just to finish up, you know what they were really curious about, you know, if you believe Betty and Barney and Travis is, how do you people work you know what's up with this spine or how does a woman get pregnant it, uh, it's almost as if they didn't know you know they here they can blast through you know at warp speed captain and, and get here in a blink of an eye but they still don't know how the human body works so that's easily explainable i have it right now go ahead grad students <laughs> they've got the equipment and they're still working on learning everything and you know they just don't have it all figured out yet but they're writing a thesis right now grad <laughs> students yeah. i can see the grays wearing the little uh graduation caps you know and they Might kind of flip over <laughs> yes and i can see our alien friends being introduced to bongs and uh you know for the grad <laughs> by the grad students <laughs> oh we'll let you go tom well, well, thank, you, so thank you, thank you, it's such a pleasure. Thank you very much, Tom. Tom. Tom Jennings, journalist. That's uh, let's see, Emmy Award, Award winner, Peabody Award winner, uh, yeah. uh Taylor Award uh, yeah. winner. Uh, is are we talking Oscar in the in the future? Do you have like well, we a won cabinet last that year, you built? <laughs> last year, we won the produced. Guild Award, uh, uh -huh. the best streaming uh, film. It was for our Apollo film, and we be beat out films by Deadwood and Black Mirror. I mean, these were like major films, and here we are, our little doc. We were only the only documentary in the category. And imagine, you know, I'm this kid from Cleveland, and they announced that I won, and nobody. Awesome. Won. What film is that? And I get up in front of you know hollywood like 1500 people actually. Oh, wow. and i look down as i'm going to rattle off see George word, and the cast and director scorsese of the irishman is like oh, yeah. right there like it's like how did i wind up here <laughs> this is amazing that is awesome it's, it's that my, is fantastic and we, and we didn't even talk about your Emmy for National Geographic on mm -hmm. the Challenger disaster. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. It's one of the most Jeez. powerful, uh, you know, powerful, as they say, hours of television uh, that you're. That, yeah, that people were seen. like weeping at the end of that. And, uh, you know, just to follow up on why it was so special and we won the Emmy, um, you know, it was the anniversary, I guess it would have been the 30th uh 86 to yeah, uh, yeah 30th anniversary of the challenger disaster and so networks love anniversaries because they can hang their hook uh, hat on those and they said can you come up with something new about the so we came up with two things i i think your audience would appreciate both these things one i uh talked about radio huh? and um so you know Krista McAuliffe was the big sure. star, if you want to call her that, the teacher sure. in space. 
she was from Concord, New Hampshire. So everybody like was pulling CBS and you know the the usual suspects about the uh, about a national tragedy. And I thought, I wonder if there's like a radio station in Concord that might have their archive because oftentimes these smaller markets they throw things away. Sure. So we called like the main radio station in Concord, which is, you know, all of 5,000 watts, as you can imagine. And we talked to like the news director who'd been there forever. And he said, uh, you, want, you want our Challenger archive? No one's ever asked us for that before. We followed her for the whole year. And we had a guy in the stands in Florida describing it when it blew up and I'm like, so we had this amazing archive throughout again the audio married with so many images of them training and things like that was remarkable the other thing is watch all your archive to the end <laughs> because <laughs> we also found now you know when you do like well this was a few years ago now if you call up NASA and they know us because we've done a lot of space stuff and say, hey, you know, we're doing the Challenger now, uh, they'll send out at the time. Now it's probably all digital, but they sent us like 40 tapes, screeners, right? And uh, our, you know, like 40 hours of stuff of behind the scenes and what they're doing. And uh, we found on like, I think it was tape 38, we found Krista McAuliffe inside the challenger about a week before they were going to go up doing her lessons remember she was going to do she was going to teach from space and broadcast from space into all the classrooms in north america she was rehearsing her lessons no one had ever seen it. and i called nasa and i'm like you know one of the researchers we know like i've never seen this this is amazing you know, she goes through her whole lesson plan for like an hour, you know, and she's showing the different experiments she's going to do, you know, and that became a big part of our show. And I said, how did we get this? And NASA said, we send out the same 40 tapes to anyone who asks, but I think they stopped looking at around tape 20. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, it was there the whole time. And all we had to do was go to the end. I mean, you know, it's crazy. I mean, you just have to take the time to look and there's going to be one scene that will be magic and it'll be worth the days that you had to plow through so much stuff that didn't work. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how we got the Emmy. Uh, those two main sources were uh, how we did it. You know, it's funny we mentioned uh, about you know, Star Trek and, and so forth and yeah. how much Nichelle Nichols has a connection to the Challenger uh, you know it was because of her um, working for uh, for NASA and helping to recruit women mm -hmm. that Christy McAuliffe ended up being an astronaut on, uh, on a Challenger and, uh, and so forth so they're the ties that bind yeah. Uh, you know, us regarding it, but it was it was a tragedy that should not have happened. But uh, we could talk for another hour about. Well, I'm yeah. sure you guys are very familiar with it, but you know, it was the race to prove that we had it down. You know, they were trying to send the shuttle up like a bus every you know two weeks, and they just you know they pushed it too far. And yeah. They, yeah, it, it's a shame. But the fact that she made a recording of her lessons that she was going to do and they're really cool like magnets and stuff yeah. the fact that she did that i mean that's a great legacy and we're the only yeah. ones to use that footage right and that's well, that's great too because as as you know for a filmmaker to do that compared to oh hey we're just a documentary on the challenger oh. and you talk about the crew and then of course kristen mccullough but you don't show anything else no. except for, oh, hey, look, the ex Challenger exploded. Oh. Yeah, they think if they have a Challenger go with throttle up, their job is done. And that's right. 
that's the beginning of the story. And oh, we yeah. knew well, that hey, when we deliver these things, much like the alien stories that I hope you and your audience will tune into. Yes. We leave no stone unturned. You know, we find it all. Now we can't put it all in. Right. But it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, the, the wealth of riches, you know? And yeah. then we get to pick and choose what best drives the story forward and what best will pull the audience in and make the, the audience feel like they're experiencing it as close to real time as possible. And sure. that's how you win an Emmy Award. And a, and a Peabody. Right, right <laughs> Anthony. You Thank you very it, much, Anthony. Tom Jennings. Tom just gave everybody the blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it. you very much, Tom Jennings, Thank for you joining guys. us. Thank you very it's much, been Tom. Wonderful. Thank oh, you yeah. very much. And you got to come back for sure. Absolutely. Yes, I'd love to talk about The Exorcist and Amityville. I would oh, love it. It's a good this. one. I can send you guys uh, a link if you want. Thank you. That'd be great. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to get in touch with Dina, uh, with with Dina White, and see what yeah, we can uh, what we can I'll do. I'll make sure she sends it to you because it's out now. I can send you a link. Nice. Oh, awesome. as far as getting you back, uh, we'd like to have you back. <laughs> sure. This is amazing. Wow, yes. This is great. You guys are. I love fun. it. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much, Tom. For thank, your you. Time. thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. All much. the luck in your future projects, <laughs> and um, I'm going to subscribe to Discovery Plus just to see this because <laughs> I want to see your version of it. Oh, um, you want, I, I want to see no stone under. I want to see the real version oh, of what it, happened to Tom, uh, Betty and Barney. It might be worth uh, getting a, uh, a subscription at least for a little yeah. while. There I, you go. I, I, I think there you enjoy go. It. There you go. Hey, yeah, go. Hey, well, we interviewed that guy. Yeah, <laughs> we know him. The the Al Omega. What you uh, what you got going? What's what's what, let's do a little round robin. Um. Well. <clears throat> I do have something going. I have a, a very special show coming out. Uh, just coming, you know, just loading it up here and now as we speak. Um, I'm doing the movie Abby, which is an exorcism movie. Oh, hey, there you go. Nice. The, uh, I'll spoil it a little bit. The young lady who plays the lead in it passed away about a month ago now. Carol Speed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And also, uh, I was uh, I worked on the set of Doll Murder Spree some years back with uh, Moses J. Mosley, yeah. oh, wow. The Walking Dead, and he yeah. just passed away. Yeah, wow. and we stayed in touch. We were friends over the internet for quite a bit, and, and uh, very sorry to see that uh, something had happened to him. So um, it's a lot less funny episode from me. So. Uh. Uh, I highly recommend everyone watching it and, and uh, remembering Moses Miss Mosley and, and so forth. And Carol Speed, of course, was wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, when does it yes. air? It comes out uh, Friday night. Yeah, on Roku and various your various platforms. Well, you know, not only is it going to be on various platforms, it's now going to be on Creature Features Network, which is our very own Roku platform, which cool. you can now log into. And we also have our own Roku app, Creature the original Creature Features app. Well, excuse me, I'll put a tie on, you know, yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> we, we have our own app down in the app store, so you can watch my show on our, our lovely new website, which is nice. It's uh, not entirely finished, but it does look pretty darn good. So yeah, got, I've right. been super, super busy. Joe, what do you got? Uh, Joe, what do you got? Uh, oh, what do I got? Oh, not much, uh, except for, hey, you got a lot of trailers coming up, like with the Jurassic World. Part 72. Oh, whoops, sorry. Did I say 72? I, uh, you know, it slipped my mind. We're now uh, 56. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. we're at 56. Okay, thank you. Also, I uh, just found uh, our guest list for Monster Palooza has just started. If you're out in the Pasadena area, hopefully, if it works, I'll be down there with maybe all these crazy guys. Uh, but, but Anthony, what do you got? Oh, you know, not much. <laughs> uh, Death Parade Film Fest is running. Um, we introduced the new review portal. Uh, so you'll see sure. new films as well as some old classics. Um, just released Boogeyman um, yeah. and the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. We'll be posting soon and look out for this episode. I'm and we have more yeah. guests along the line. Uh, so this might be considered like the off season 
for horror film festivals, but uh, we just have so much going on. We just love what we're doing so much that, um, you know, we can attract amazing people like Tom Jennings to come on and just talk about his work. And um, yeah, I, I love it. This is all year round. We just have fun and we get to see amazing stuff. So um, I'd say just keep it tuned right here. And, and we have, and, and, and I've got, um... I'm actually kind of, uh, you know, kind of soaked because uh, I've been asked to do a uh, a piece on American Werewolf in London oh, for issue 31 of We Belong Dead magazine, and they said, "Oh, by the way, just so you know, it's going to be the cover story." Oh, oh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, all right. I can do this. I can uh, do this. Give me tequila. Yeah. Give me tequila. That's right. Just tell me you've never seen it. Well, you have to say, no. if you any source material and you have any of the shots from uh, Jenny Auger in the shower scene, let yeah. me know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a we lot. We need some of, archive footage. There's a lot of. Uh, ah, I'm innocent of all charges, uh, Your Honor. And I'm excited because we have some guests that are coming up, but I, I just, I really, I really can't name them. Uh, yet until it actually um, well okay well the, no. the one I can uh, because he has agreed to it is Greg Clark um, who is if you were familiar if you were a kid growing up in the 70s and on into the 80s um, of and you were at all a fan of B-movie horror the drive-in the drive-in feature you know stuff you generally saw great, uh, you know, one of like five names d as director of that of those particular films. One of those was Graydon Clark. Uh, you know, movies like you know were, that were never going to be on the Oscar. You know, uh, well, movies that were going to be uh, you know that are Satan's cheerleaders. Yeah. Uh, you know, movie without warning. The one. Uh, you know, with there's uh, there's there's probably like ten others that I'm uh, that I'm forgetting, but uh, he did a lot of this. He did one called The awesome. Uninvited in the late uh, in late eighties. Uh, and but that yeah, was remake, right? Huh? That was remake. The Uninvited. No, it's actually no. the same name, but a same different, name, different type color. of film. Gotcha. Yes. But it, it it was, and it, he was the one he would have he would have like these B movie veteran casts pulled together usually it had oh. jack palance or something uh, uh, uh well, that, that's gonna be tom fun. see tom i'm sure see look he remembers jack palance <laughs> I remember, yes. I mean, you know why i remember jack palance you remember what? the one-handed push-up yes yeah. the Oscars. yeah <laughs> that, yeah. Was I, no, that was i remember good. him in um city slickers film well yeah. the city slickers yeah. not the one-handed push-up the hey, finger the finger yes the one yes. one thing the one thing anthony shall not do is oh, make sure not to push the red button until we're ready yeah oh but, yeah <laughs> but no so what? anyway so that's coming up march 3rd cool and uh Should be that fun. will that'll be a lot of uh, a lot of fun but there's going to be more uh more folks to uh uh to come but, stick at yeah. I hit more, here. yeah, more, yeah, more people can shake a stick at. Oh, well, that's our time, guys. All right. Uh, once again, okay. Tom, thank you very much for no, spending your time with us. Yeah. Um, February 18th, Discovery Plus. Tune in because it's going to be an amazing show. We're going to be tuning in and maybe we do another review of it. We'll see. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thank you very much and uh, enjoy thank horror, you. everyone. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, and Not everybody. Watch horror, watch horror, yeah. horror films and keep America strong. Indeed. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Oh.